सर्वे सन्तु सर्वे भद्रा पश्य माँ कशि दुख भाग भवे ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम तत्स मे ऑल बी हैप्पी मे नो वन बी सब्जेक्ट टू सफरिंग मे नो वन सफर फ्रॉम इलनेस मे ऑल सी ओनली गुडनेस इन अदर्स एंड मे नो वन सफर एट ऑल Let there be peace, peace, and peace everywhere by the grace of God. Good morning, friends. The subject of my talk this morning is the concept of God in non-dualistic Vedanta. non dualistic vedanta means non dualistic hinduism her ancestors did not even know the word hinduism so that's why we call it vedanta and so maybe we can on the founded this centers in the west they didn't call them hindu in centers of hinduism but they call it call them vedanta centers and hinduism is the only religion which accommodates philosophy other religions do not accommodate philosophy and there are six systems of religious philosophy in hinduism they are called darshanas that is to those schools of philosophy one can have the experience of truth divine truth then i recall those days when i was a novitiate monk in one of the centers of the ramakrishna order in india the centers in india are called ashramas so i was in the shilong ashram and the swami was in charge of that ashram was swami swamyananda he was a i live of soul and once he said to us we there were two brahmacharis there i myself was one and the other one was ram gopal he said i would like to send you to a saintly swami of our order and that will benefit you a lot because our scriptures say satang sango hi veshajam the company of good souls is like medicine <laughs> and he had been held by that saintly swami when he was a student in college so he thought that he should he would send us there and that saintly swami lived in a village center of the ramakrishna order that village is sargachi and the name of the saintly swami was swami me premeshananda he was renowned for his saintly nature then we two brahmacharis or novitiate monks arrived at sargachi center and then after we had saluted him he asked me what my pre monastic name was but it is not the tradition in our order to be talking about our pre monastic names so as he stated he understood it then he said don't worry i am a senior monk you may tell me then i told him 
by pre-monastic name, which is Jyotirindra. <laughs> then he said, may I ask you where you were born? Then I told him the name of the city where he was born. Then he With his two hands, he cupped up the hands and he showed me how small I was at that time. He said, how large do I do? He asked me when you were born. I said, I think I was no larger than an average size baby. Then he, with his arms, he showed how small I was at that time. Then he said, you yeah, are that small, but when I asked you, where you were born, then he told me the name of a city which is so much larger than your body. It looks like there is something in you which is not satisfied with limitation. It wants to expand. Then if I ask you, in which country you are born, then you will name, you will name India, which is a much, much bigger place. Then he said, you see, we are the monks of the Ramakrishna order. We have to expand our ego more and more to include the entire universe, he said. We'll include all. That's how he was teaching that inside us there is that divinity which is Brahman. Brahman means larger than the largest. That's what we are. We are not our bodies. It is something. Our souls are divine. That's what he was trying to teach. Anyway, so our tradition says that those who love truth they are called philosophers. The word philosophy means a lover of wisdom. Philosopher means a lover of wisdom. Philosophers means they are lovers of wisdom. And wisdom comes from knowing the truth. How to know what is true? in Hinduism or Vedanta, they have told us how to judge the truth. He said, there are four methods by which you can know what, what is the truth. First is Pratyaksha, that is perception. Then is Anumana, that means inference. Then third one is reliable testimony, which is Shabda. And fourth one is Upamana, that means comparison. So perception, inference, reliable testimony, and comparison. With these methods, we judge the truth. For example, I may look around and see the distant mountains and then I draw the conclusion that those mountains must really be there because I perceive the mountain. Then I see some smoke coming out of the trees which covered the mountain. And I see that smoke, and that smoke is also real to me, because I perceive the smoke. Then I come to know something which I don't perceive, and I know that to be true. What is it? That there must be fire up on the mountain, otherwise there would not have been any smoke. The existence of fire, I 
get to know the truth of the existence of fire get to know through inference and reliable testimony when i was being sent to this country to serve the children of god here by our order then i needed an american visa that was many years ago then the visa office of the city of kolkata is at that time at the headquarters which is belur mod near that city kolkata Kolkata is one of the largest cities of India. Then the American visa office said that they would like to know my age. But I was not born in a hospital. I was born at home. So I did not have a birth certificate. So they said, what do you say your age is? That may be true, but... we want some reliable testimony is your mother alive and luckily my mother was still alive and she was living in the city of holy city of banaras said if she can give us her testimony that you are born on such and such day such and in such and such year then that will be considered reliable so I communicated that message to my mother and then she invited a magistrate and the magistrate came and in the magistrate's presence my mother gave her testimony about when i was born and so that testimony was sent to me and i presented that to the us embassy on the basis of which they gave me my visa to come to the united states so this is a reliable testimony also consider a person who is born after his father's death he has not seen his father but from the reliable testimony given by his mother they get she he gets to know uh, how his father was that he had a father then then there is other method it is comparison while in india i saw indian buffaloes roaming around in the fields there i was told that there are american buffaloes they was coming to america they told us that there were american buffaloes they are called bisons so i when i came here and there is a certain park where some bisons are visible so by seeing the bison through comparison i understood that they were the american buffaloes so these are the four methods one is perception the other one is inference the third one is reliable testimony and the fourth one is comparison with these methods we can know the tr- truth and india is a country where the religion does not have religious scriptures accommodate all kinds of questions about religious truths the word blasphemy is not there i have told that to you many times in the past and so all the possible questions <laughs> have been asked and their answers are also there in the scriptures of hinduism or vedanta and there are some philosophers who are called charvakas charvaka the word charvaka has come from 
towards Charu and Vak. That means sweet is Charu and Vak with words. They, their words are very sweet. <laughs> Why are they sweet? Because these Charvakas are hedonistic philosophers. They are atheists. According to them, the sole purpose of human life is to have sense enjoyment. <laughs> yes. And all kinds of religious thoughts are welcome in India. So these philosophers would go to villages and sit under a big tree. And in India, in the villages, in many villages, they have the paved around sitting area around a big tree, around the root of the big tree. And such preachers would go and sit there and give talks, and they would be surrounded by the villagers. So one Charvaka philosopher went and sat on such a platform and gave it talk and thought he had proved that there was no God and sense enjoyment is the, is the sole purpose of human life. Then a little boy came and saluted that philosopher and the, boy, the philosopher asked that boy, where do you live? What's your father's name? What is your name? This is the custom in India to on, ask such questions on first meeting. And the boy said to that philosopher, Revered sir, don't you know already all these things? And the philosopher said, No, I don't know any of those things. And the little boy said to the Charvaka philosopher, then, sir, perhaps you also have to not just these things, you don't know them, you, you don't know God. But if you try, you'll be able to know God. And if you inquire, you'll get to know all these questions about me. Similarly, you can know God if you try hard enough. So this story gives us some teaching. That is, there is no end of the pursuit after knowledge. And then there are scriptures also talk about theoretical knowledge and experiential conviction. You see, we know that mothers have great love and affection for their children. And motherly love, that is a great form of human love. We know about it, because we are the recipients of that love. But even though we are the recipients of motherly love, we have only that knowledge that we have of motherly love is only Theoretical knowledge it is not experiential knowledge. The only the mothers have experiential knowledge of what kind of love and affection they have for their children. You see, so experiential conviction. To know certain truths, we should have experiential conviction. And what we really are, that question has been asked many times in our tradition. And to know what we really are, we have to depend on reliable testimony of our scriptures, which are called Vedas. And the Vedas talk about the divinity of everything and every being. And divinity is 
larger than the largest it is called brahman impersonal brahman even it is beyond time space and causation divinity does not have any personality it is infinity eternity and the highest truth and knowledge sat chit anandam and also it is called anandam 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 is often translated into our language as joy and in english it is often translated as bliss this world is also called the world of pairs of opposites darkness and light they form one such pair joy and sorrow they form another pair enjoyment and suffering they form another prayer pair so this is this world is the world of pairs of opposites if one knows darkness that person know will know light and vice versa one who is born blind that person does not know either light or darkness so when you say oh poor soul is in here she is in perpetual darkness but that will mean nothing to that person because they won't miss any of these two so this is how the world is so what is anandam sat chit anandam anandam is joy or enjoyment no ananda means neither sadness nor happiness it is like relief from suffering person let us suppose is suffering from a severe headache then he takes some painkiller after a few minutes that person's headache is gone now he has relief from his headache this anandam is something like that it is not the opposite of opposite of nirananam that means absence of joy it is neither enjoyment nor suffering it is like relief from headache when the person has got rid of his headache then that person has a, is in a state of relief that person is neither suffering nor enjoying so also anandam is like god beyond the pairs of opposites that is the idea satchit anandam and this brahman which is divinity according to the school of non dualistic vedanta that is beyond time space and causation does not have a personality it is eternity infinity and beyond causation it doesn't do anything so that is the concept of divinity Now how did the world come out what is the source of this world and 
one of our teachers called the Rig Veda. There is a hymn there. It is called Nasadiya Sukta. It describes how the world came out of the source. The source was something which about which we cannot say it exists, nor can you say it does not exist. <laughs> and then eventually this world evolved. And at the end of that hymn, it is mentioned, does the creator know that this world has been created? Perhaps the creator even does not know. Because this world has been created by Maya or magic. By magic, if I am a great hypnotist, I can create a tiger. And those who have, whom I have hypnotized, they will see the tiger. But will I see that tiger? No, I will not see that tiger. Because I am not hypnotized. So also, Brahman is a hypnotist, so to say. And that power of hypnotism is called maya or magic. And with that magic. He has created the world. We who are under the sway of that magic, we see this world and experience it. But does the creator Nirguna Brahman, does he know it? No. The Nirguna Brahman is neither he or she. Nirguna Brahman does not have any personality. From Nirguna Brahman's point of view, this world does not exist. That is the concept of divinity in non-dualist school of Vedanta. So Brahman alone, the Nirguna Brahman alone is real. That has been mentioned in this non-dualist school of Vedanta. What is real? The question has been asked, what is real? You are using the word real. Then the answer is always there. So something which does not change at all, and which is not eternal. Which is not eternal and which, which is eternal and which does not change at all, that means changeless. That alone is real. Anything which changes is not real. And anything which is not eternal is not real. For example, to me, my body may appear to be real, but my body has changed. It used to be the body of a little child, and now it is the body of an old man. So it has changed. So my body is not real. In the same way, my sense organs are not real, my motor organs are not real, my mind is not real either, because aside from that, as I usually say, the owner and the object owned cannot be the same. So, I own my physical body, so I am not my physical body. I must be different from it as the owner. In the same way, I am neither my sense organs nor my motor organs. Am I my mind? No. I own my mind, so I cannot be my mind. I am different from it. And this idea of I-ness or ego, has come from my identification with what I am not, that is a thought of my conscious mind, I or ego. I am not that ego. As the owner, I must be different from it. But it is so difficult to separate ourselves from that ego. As if the ego goes away, I don't exist anymore. There is no I or you. 
And what exists is that Nirguna Brahman, impersonal divinity, beyond gender and everything. Divinity, eternity, and the absolute truth. That's what we are. So divinity is changeless and eternal. Changeless, anything which changes and not eternal, that is not real. And argue and say, well, what about me? I used to be have a little body as a child. It has changed. Is the, my body not real? It is real. And I am not going to be eternal, still I am real. Then this Vedanta philosopher will say, non-dualistic, he said, no, you are not real. If you see a small creature, a rabbit, for five seconds, and then it becomes a puppy, then it becomes a kitten, Every five seconds it keeps on changing. And I ask you, what is that creature really, you tell me? And you start scratching your head and say, I do not know really because it is changing all the time. Had it not changed at all, then I do well to tell. Because to judge reality, we also use changelessness. And judge what is real, we also use the idea of eternal existence. If I see an African elephant in, in my backyard just for one minute and it is, it, it is there, then it, is, it vanishes into thin air, it is not there anymore. Then I conclude that that African elephant was not really there. But had it existed there for years and years and through eternity, could I say that it was not real? No. I would know that it was real. So even our day-to-day -day experiences also, which are reality by using this definition. That is, reality is something real, something which is real is eternal and changeless. Brahman alone is real. Divinity alone is real. This is the teaching of non dualistic school of Vedanta. Sarvam Khalidam Brahma. Everything is that divinity, that Brahman. Really speaking, that is Brahman. But we are under the spell of magic is called Maya. That's why we do not know what Brahman is. We have to go beyond Maya. And what is Maya? <laughs> In the past I gave a talk on that. But maybe next Tuesday I will talk again on Maya. What is Maya? Thank you for your patience. I, have given, I think I have given my talk. And let me end my talk with a prayer. Om Asato Satgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Mityorma Mritam Gamaya, Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat. Oh God, please lead us from what is unreal to the real. Please lead us from ignorance of divinity to the knowledge of divinity. And please lead us from death to immortality. Because that's our nature. Thank you so much.